Welcome back to the shop, everybody. As you can see, I've got a beautiful painter's tape wall that I've produced here. It's obviously for Jacob and Tessa. Not really. This is a cupcake wall made for an upcoming wedding in our family. Very exciting stuff. Everybody loves talking about the wedding, wedding this, wedding that, wedding this. What it means for me is more projects. But I like projects, so I guess I like weddings. This project, however, was made on the CNC, 90%. Carveco Software helped me design and build the shelves, the sign, the rose embellishments, the feet, and these brackets. And if you'd like to see how I put this all together, cut it out on the mill, watch the rest of the video, and let's get started. So we're going to begin by cutting down this piece of gold. It's obviously not gold, it's plywood, but for the price of it, you'd think it was lined with gold. Them big box stores are proud of these pieces of plywood. They got a hefty price on them. Here we'll use my um, homemade jig, homemade track saw. Works very well. Cutting down the pieces to the right width for the CNC. These are the shelving units. using a one, two, three block as a spacer so we're not running the shelf along the edge of the fence, creating a pinch point. Three shelves. Crosshair in the center for the origin. And as I've said before, I found that Screwing your stock directly to the CNC is the best clamping fixture there is. Oversize your stock by an inch on all dimensions, screw it down in the corners, and that stock will go nowhere. Yes, you'll have to surface and replace your wasteboard more often, but I think the finished project or the finished product on your projects is more important than that wasteboard. And let's put the shape Poco to work here. Again, we're using Carbco software. My personal opinion, but I think it's the best software out there for the hobby CNC and the professional version as well. No touch probe. Most of the time I use the paper. That tells me where the top of the wood is. Go, and here we are. We'll cut out the first shelf. A lot of times I'll do these designs just out of my head, I'll manipulate the software until it gives me what I like, and then we cut the pieces out. In this case, you'll see later on in the video that I really didn't care for the sharp points on the forward-facing portion of the shelf, so I rounded those off manually. But that's later on in the video. There's one. four tabs and we'll take him over to the bandsaw and whack those tabs off quick. Nothing to it. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Now I made a mark right there so I could reposition the next piece without having to re-zero the machine. Simply put it in place, push go, start the router, and it cuts number two. Right here I've got a helper that I'm messing with. The camera angle wasn't very good. I was hoping you could see what he was doing. He was between my legs forcing attention. Mr. Atlas does that from time to time when I'm standing in front of him. All right, time to put the Rikon to work. We'll make quick work of these tabs and bing bang boom, we have ourselves the first shelf. Nothing to it. Second verse, same as the first, except for I was too close to that pole and I couldn't hardly cut the corner off or cut the tab off. So we got through it. Sanding all sides, removing the tabs until the, the bottom edge is flat, like so. Flipping it around and then we'll go into high speed sanding here. I wish all sanding was that fast. But we all know it's not. Each one of them gets sanded so the edges are smooth, so I don't get any slivers. 
little maintenance on the mill is always important. Here's a little trick. You've screwed down your stock, it's in position, you've zeroed the machine, you're going to make repetitive cuts, you've got more than one piece of stock that's exactly the same size as this. Just take a scrap piece of whatever the stock is that you're using, a scrap off of that, and create a fence on the side of your pieces. That way you can take this out, put the next one in, continue the carving, back out, back in, continue the carve. And always slamming your new piece against this and this fence and you've got an exact zero each time. Now here we're cutting out the shelf supports. I did four on each one of these pieces of stock. That was the reason for putting the extra fence in so that I could take this out and put the next one back in. And re-zeroing takes time, so if you do a little extra step here, it makes it a lot faster for production work. And although this is minor production, it is production work. And I thought if I used the cutoff from the shelf, I could create the same taper around the top of the backer board. So that's what I'm doing here. I could have cut this out with a CNC. It was just quicker to do it here. And I like to play with all my tools. So I used my dad's jigsaw there. And we're going to use a flush trim bit on my router to clean up the edge. Making your adjustments with the router unplugged, safety first, safety third as Mike Rowe would say. Then we plug the router in and we start using it. That new base that I've created with those two handles is outstanding. If you don't have one of those, I highly recommend you make yourself one. It's a lot more stable, you have a lot more control on the router when you're hand working it. Finishing up the last edge here, I adjusted the clamps so that the template did not move. Good to go. Now we'll start putting this thing together. I wanted to offset the feet inward one thickness of the board. That's what I did there to get the measurement. Then I'm using a marking gauge to create a line where I want all the screws in line. I'm using a spacer here that is the same width as the stock. Using a clamping fixture here to maintain 90 degrees. And I should have slid that in from underneath. I shouldn't have slid it forward. All the glue got wiped off. But it's not going anywhere. I did a little overkill here. You'll see it here in just a second. And here we go with the overkill. We're going to add some dowel pins in here. After beginning this, I realized this is the back of the piece. It's going to be against a wall. I can just screw everything together, but in the beginning, I thought I better pin everything. And then I thought better of it after I got moving along here. And here you can see I've created a line across the back of the panel, and I'm going to start screwing things. Now, sorry for the camera shake. My good camera died through this thing. The batteries got went out and I didn't have any batteries charged so we switched to the cell phone so we get the fancy waving action there little glue let's put the first shelf in place I pinned the first one to hold it still and then I thought better of that I didn't like this the nail head sticking out so I got rid of that idea and we mark each shelf out and we then glued and clamped them together with screws behind so that I didn't have to put any um, nails in the surface of the shelves. Here I'm just showing you how far we're going to space these apart as we assemble the project. They were spaced six inches apart. Let's start putting these shelves together. I drove one pin in to hold them in place while I was 
drilling the holes, the pilot holes, and putting the screws in. And here I show you where I'm clamping instead of putting pins in the top of the shelves. One screw in the back of the support bracket. Some glue. Screw it in to hold it in place. Remove the spacer and put a clamp on the bottom side of the shelf bracket to pinch the shelf to the bracket, like so. It's not going anywhere. Here you'll see something that I don't do very often. I'm using the touch probe on the corner. It's a very, very good tool to use. It's a good tool to have, but the majority of my cars I put the origin in the center of the project. That way I can oversize and use the screws to hold it down and I don't have to worry about that. What kind of scared me there a little bit, I thought it was gonna run into that screw. This is the rose embellishment that we're gonna put on the outside corners. I don't know if this thing has outside corners. It's kind of rounded on everything. This carb is limited to an eighth of an inch deep. We used a eighth inch end mill to create the flats and then I went back in with the V-bit to create the details. That thing can be mesmerizing when you're watching it. You can stand there and watch it for quite some time and realize, you know what, you could be doing something else in the shop while that CNC is running. I created an outside path, tooling path, to cut it off. You'll see how I did this here as we progress, but there's the 60 degree V bit making the sharp points and doing the details. It's incredible how intricate this machine can run onto these little projects that I create from day to day. But as I said, it can be mesmerizing. You'll watch. And that thing will go around and before you know it, 15 minutes have gone by and you haven't done anything else in the shop. So, and I'm really enjoying that Pawn CNC dust boot. With the ability to take the front off like that, I can show you all what's going on with that bit and still have dust collection in place. Here's another view from the top. And we are done. Fancy camera blur as the machine goes to the right side. I wish I could say I was doing that on purpose, but I'm not that good a photographer. It just works out that way sometimes. So as you can see the contour path around the outside, we're gonna put the right on to work again. Here's where we cut the piece and narrow the piece, I should say. I didn't have to use tabs or anything to hold everything in stock in, in place this way, the stock in place this way. We'll slice this off to the proper thickness then we'll take it over to the old craftsman and I will cut the contour loose trimming ever so carefully next to the carving. A little bit of hand sanding to smooth off the edge and it'll be a very very nice piece to add to this shelving unit for some embellishment. I was very pleased how it came out. And of course, my daughter's favorite trick is to add fire to everything. So once this is cut out, we'll take the propane torch to it to accentuate, <laughs> accentuate, to make the details stand out. This is real time here. I wanted to show you how slow and careful you have to go when you're doing this. You know, obviously don't want to wreck the project and the old eyes weren't working so good so we added some light if you're wondering what that big hole is in the side of the craftsman saw there it's so that I can adjust um, pulleys and tighten set screws and everything without hand having to stand on my head to get inside the machine all right my daughter's favorite part let's burn the projects and as you can see, the torch does a nice job bringing those details forward. Is it hot? I don't know. Let's find out. Nope. 
looking pretty good. Here's where I said I didn't like the front corner, so I trimmed my thumbnail and cut them off with a handsaw. And what I had done was taken a large washer and created the profile that I was going against, not cutting on the line with the handsaw and then smoothing them off with a little belt sander. I think it gives it a much better, much finished, much more finished look with those around it. And I don't want anybody reaching for a cupcake and getting stabbed in the hand. Just an added little detail. All right, here, let's put these things on the shelf itself. I used that piece of oak as a spacer so that I had both in the same height. I then measured off that point on each side to ensure that they were both inset the same distance. Then I needed the angle to be correct, so I used a bevel gauge and confirmed that the angle was correct on both sides. The first one was screwed in place, so it wasn't moving. So I had to match the first one on the second one. Drilling very carefully from the back side so that I don't come flying through the front of the car. We use some three quarter inch pan head screws to secure it in place. And just like that, it's fancy. And of course, I'm not gonna run those screws in with a drill. I do this by hand to be safe. Give you a little shot of that here. backing them out and forcing them back in. It wanted to push the carving off of the surface of the shelf because I didn't penetrate very far into the back of that thing for fear of going out through the front. Now here we have a great mistake. And by mistake, I say this was supposed to be the practice piece. But after I had finished carving it, I really liked the way the offset white or off white looked with the letters carved into it. So this piece became the piece that we used for the sign. This is actually one of the cutoffs from the shelves. And because of that, I had to change the outside corner profile. I ovaled it, as you saw in the beginning of the video, so that it looks good on the wall. It's amazing what you can do with those V-bits. They do make things look awfully pretty. And here you see what I'm talking about with rounding the corner. I magically cut the corner off with a protractor. Rounding the corners, back to the craftsman, some sanding, and it's good to go. Now, I didn't turn the camera on when I put this thing on the wall, but I did it exactly the same as the roses. As always, I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one.